Check it out! This is the deepest and most unexplored part of our planet. It's so deep that if you stick Everest in it, its peak will still be underwater. This is the Mariana Trench. It's located in the western Pacific Ocean, and its maximum known depth is 36,000 feet. And this is you, an average person who burns with interest to understand what is at the bottom. You're tired of watching documentaries about the Mariana Trench, so you decide to check it out yourself. But you have neither a special suit nor a submarine. You only have an air tank and a brick which you tie to your leg. Take a deep breath and dive in. Five feet underwater, you don't feel anything unusual. This is the depth you might jump into a pool or swim at the beach to see exotic fish. Five feet doesn't cause any inconvenience and you feel quite comfortable. But the brick pulls you deeper, and soon you find yourself at a depth of 32 feet. Here, you begin to feel the main problem of diving so deep. And no, it's not hungry sharks looking in your direction. It's that kraken! No, not really. The main threat is pressure. On the water surface, you felt one atmosphere of pressure. At a depth of 32 feet, this pressure is double. Now, don't worry, you're safe for now, but you may already feel discomfort in the eardrums. This is because the pressure causes the air volume in your body to compress. You'll feel this in your ears, sinuses, and lungs. But these air pockets in your body are flexible enough to withstand even more specific depth. You continue to descend. 65 feet underwater. It's already quite dark here, and the discomfort from the pressure increases. Ah, if you're not a trained diver, you begin to feel the pain in your ears. Now your lungs are reduced in volume by three times. If the air sacs in your lungs collapse, air bubbles will get into your blood, and you may suffer an embolism or stroke. You've reached 100 feet. This is the maximum depth divers go for recreational purposes. You need to be a well-trained and experienced diver, like me, to cope with the pressures three times higher than usual. In addition to this, you begin to feel a new symptom, nitrogen narcosis. The air in your body is made up of 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. At higher pressure, nitrogen begins to have a toxic effect on your body. You feel a slight dizziness, tunnel vision, memory impairment, and unexplained cheerfulness and excitement. Narcosis can cause visual and auditory hallucinations and make the diver do strange things. For example, dancing. Yes, it might be the most peculiar dance in the world, but narcosis can cause worse consequences. The diver may think he can breathe without equipment and inhale water. To avoid this, divers use gas mixtures with higher oxygen and lower nitrogen content to reach greater depths. You're still committed to the dive and find yourself at a depth of 196 feet. Here, even regular oxygen becomes toxic. That's because you're consuming it at seven times the pressure of what you're used to. Oxygen intoxication can cause seizures. If there are no professional divers nearby to help, you may be in big trouble. To avoid such intoxications, helium is included in diving gas mixtures. But it's not to make your voice funny. Theoretically, with helium in the tank, a diver can reach a depth of 984 feet. Hey, you've reached 702 feet. This is the world record for free diving. Herbert Nisch was able to achieve this depth without special equipment in a single breath. Yeah, I know it sounds strange, but it was easier for him to reach this depth over divers because he didn't use gas mixtures in an air tank and he didn't face narcosis. For his achievements, he received the title of the deepest man on Earth. In 2012, he reached a depth of 831 feet but was severely injured in the process. At 831 feet, you should look around. You may encounter a submarine because they travel at this depth. But we've reached your limit. Another couple of meters and your dive will end badly. But we know people can withstand a lot more pressure. Many experiments have been conducted to find the limit of a human's dive. Using special chambers that simulate deep diving conditions, 
Theoretically, a person can withstand a depth of 1,640 feet. But it would take a long time to reach the surface from such a depth due to the need for decompression. You see, during diving, nitrogen, helium, and other gases accumulate in your body tissues and blood under high pressure. It takes time for these gases to naturally leave your body through your lungs. If you reach the surface too quickly, these gases will form into bubbles, destroy blood vessels, and block blood flow. So divers must make stops on the way to the surface to just hang out there and simply breathe away the nitrogen. (laughs) Better bring a book. Sometimes it's necessary to spend a whole month in a special decompression chamber to avoid traumatic consequences. For safe dives at great depths, you need special equipment. An atmospheric diving suit is used for long deep water dives up to 2,296 feet. It's like a mini submarine, which a person can wear. There's no need to worry about decompression sickness or nitrogen narcosis because the pressure in the suit will equal one atmosphere at all depths. Plus, you don't even need to be an experienced diver to use this suit. But it may cause claustrophobia. All right, so what if you want to go deeper? For this, you will need a submarine. The Triton 6600-2 is a private submarine that can reach 6,600 feet. The only disadvantage of this submarine is its price – $5.5 million. But let's assume that you have that money and you deploy your Triton 6600-2. Can I go along? Great! At its maximum depth, have you reached your destination? Actually, I'm afraid not. You have to overcome a depth six times deeper than that. Unfortunately, we can only reach the bottom of the Mariana Trench using drones. So, the human body can withstand enormous pressures. This is because our body is made up of 70% water. How deep can a person actually go before the pressure harms them? For a person, this depth is 22 miles. Our bones break at 24,600 pounds per square inch. This means that the depth at which our skeleton will be crushed is about 22 miles. Yeah, I think your eyeballs will pop well before that. But living organisms exist below this crush depth. The Mariana snailfish lives at a depth of about 26,000 feet. Their bodies are adapted to withstand incredibly high pressure. They chose this habitat because there are few predators and they feel safe. They can reach a length of 11 inches and weigh less than half a pound. Their diet is made up of tiny crustaceans, which crawl on the ocean floor and have lots of frustrations. Ooh, that rhymes. Let's go even deeper. We're close to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. These are cold waters where the sun's rays have never reached. But there is also life in this darkness. We just need to look very closely. Bacteria and yeast live here. This discovery surprised scientists because it was thought no living organism could survive such conditions. These microorganisms probably feed on particles of animal waste and dust that have fallen to the bottom. This discovery opened up new opportunities for scientists and motivated them to explore the depths of the oceans. Now, let's return to the surface. Wow, what a journey! After such an experience, you certainly don't want to dive again without preparation. So, to start out, practice holding your breath underwater in the bathtub. And watch out for Kraken. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Some of them look totally like Nemo or Dory. Then there's the butterfly fish and fancy guppy, which is indeed really fancy. And then there's... Ah! What on earth is that? I would definitely not pay for a diving experience to see this guy. The anglerfish has the unofficial title of the ugliest animal in the world. But I wouldn't dare to break that news to it. There are more than 200 species of anglerfish currently swimming somewhere in the gloomy depths of the Atlantic and Antarctic oceans, up to a mile below the surface. Some of them prefer different living conditions, the shallow tropical environments. Different kinds of anglerfish vary in shape and size, from the famous black sea devil to frogfish, monkfish, footballfish, goosefish, batfish, and sea toad.
The larger ones can be half as long as a full-sized bed, but most are less than a foot long. Since the choice of meals where these guys live isn't that huge, they had to come up with a unique hunting strategy. They don't waste their priceless life energy on following prospective prey. Instead, they use a piece of dorsal spine that sticks above their mouths like a fishing pole, hence the name of the fish. There's a sack of bioluminescent bacteria that glows brightly in the dark at the end of that rod. The light lures prey, and all the anglerfish has to do is wait, and then enjoy its lunch delivered right to its mouth. Their bodies are pliable and huge, so they can easily swallow prey twice their size. Deep sea anglerfish eat whatever they can find. Species that live in more shallow water aren't picky either and can eat anything from shrimp to snails and small fish. Only female anglerfish have the cool fishing rod feature though. So what about their males? Finding a soulmate deep under the sea isn't that easy. I mean, literally, there's no light down there. Plus, there are frigid temperatures and low oxygen levels. Anglerfish can't afford to go on many dates in those conditions, so they mate for life. And before you go aw about it, I have to tell you, they do it in quite a special way. Male anglerfish are much smaller than their ladies. The contrast is so striking that when researchers first got interested in their love life, they thought those males were actually the offspring, or larvae, hanging out next to their moms. Certain anglerfish male species have receptors that alert them that there's a female nearby. After they mate, the male bites into his woman and stays attached to her head, belly, near her tail, and other areas he can access. While they morph together forever, the female fish gets the male's cells, DNA, and reproductive organs, but loses her immune response cells. The male gets free permanent housing and nutrition. Given the current real estate prices, it sounds like a dream. But that accommodation is shared by up to eight males, and they can't move out if they ever feel like it. You're unlikely to meet this deep sea fish in real life, but if you meet an anglerfish in your favorite video game, remember that you can easily outswim it and make it kinder to you with tranquilizing arrows. Once you befriend it, the anglerfish can be your scout and help you discover new areas with its bioluminescent pods. Back in the real world, down in the twilight zone of the ocean, about 650 to 3300 feet down, the anglerfish isn't the only creature you're lucky you'll probably never meet. Many of the locals look like they come straight out of science fiction or horror movies, but that's because they had to adapt to this dark, deep world. I did my best to get you prepared for the creatures you're going to meet, starting with the common fangtooth. They spend most of their lives deep down, but at night, they move toward the surface to snack. These guys are more active than most other deep sea dwellers. They don't wait for food to come their way, but actually follow it and then get it with their long, hungry teeth. They don't have a built-in light bulb like the anglerfish, so they've developed a great sense of smell and use as much sunlight as they can get there in the depth to get around. Sometimes, even the shadow of a passing by prospective prey is enough for them to switch to action mode. And though they don't look too charming, they're completely harmless to humans if you ever run into one of these guys. Stoplight Loose Jaw sounds like a great name for an alternative band, but it's actually another deep sea resident with sneaky hunting habits. It has special light-producing photophores under each eye. They emit green and red light like a stoplight, hence the name of the fish. Unlike other fish, these guys hardly ever leave the twilight and midnight zones. Their lower jaw is a quarter of the total body length, and the stoplight keeps it open all the time, hoping to get some lunch. It looks like a ferocious predator, but mostly prefers zooplankton, with an occasional dessert of shrimp, krill, and fish. I'm sure you didn't expect to meet a hybrid of an eel and a bird, but here it is! The slender snipe eel has a beak, much like that of a bird, with curving tips. The beak is equipped with tiny hooked teeth that the eels use to catch the antennae of delicious shrimp. And it sure is slender, 
stretching up to 5 feet and weighing only a few ounces. Scientists don't know all of this guy's secrets, since it's pretty tricky to study in their natural habitat. But it looks like they only produce offspring once in a lifetime and then pass away. Last squids like to take it easy in life and literally go with the flow. They're filled with a solution which is lighter than water, so they don't have to make any effort to move around the deep sea looking for food and partners. These creatures are transparent, so they blend into any landscape and don't even cast a shadow while moving. Talk about a great survival tactic. If danger finds it anyway, it can transform into a lumpy ball, pushing its head and tentacles into its mantle cavity. It can also release ink into the mantle and go from transparent to black. The same ink can protect it against hungry whales and seabirds. Another tactic they use to scare off predators is to activate their light-emitting organs around their eyes. Hmm, I'm getting hungry. Maybe I can snack on this sea cucumber. Ouch, it's moving. So I guess it doesn't belong in a salad after all. These soft-bodied fellows live in all parts of the ocean, from shallow waters to the deep underwater world. Most of them slowly move around with their tiny feet, but some crawl around by flexing their bodies. Sea cucumbers can shed their internal organs when there's a predator approaching. Those sticky organs distract the intruder, and the happy cucumber moves on and just grows the organs back. What's that glistening in the distance? Looks like someone dropped gems in the water. That's a sea sapphire, also known as the most beautiful animal you've never seen. Some males of this type of copepod can change color from deep blue to purple, red, or gold. One second later, it's gone. And it's back, shimmering bright. The secret to this magic is that their bodies are transparent and reflect light differently at certain angles. It looks like it's their way of communicating between each other and attracting mates. Female sea sapphires don't have the same superpower, but their eyes are bigger compared to males, probably to spot them from a distance. Males roam wild and free, and their ladies stay in the crystal palaces of strange barrel-shaped jellies called salps. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.